So here we are at the 31st Insular Craft Fair on Fuerteventura. We're in Antigua and uh, I have Debbie with me from the local tourist office. Resplendent in neck brace. Uh, first of all, Debbie, up. I'm going to ask, how are you feeling? Uh, better than I did uh, yesterday, but yeah, I'm okay. You're okay. Can I, can I ask how you did this? When I was trying to jump up to Coralejo. <laughs> I've just got uh, muscles, uh, contracted muscles in my neck and a collapsed vertebrae. Oh my word. So, yeah. But it just goes to show you're well loved here because you've had lots of people asking after you. So Debbie, this is the biggest event on the arts and craft calendar for Fuerteventura. It's absolutely massive. I mean, tell us what's so special about it. It's special because we have real craft makers. They're not just from Fuerteventura. You've got to remember they come from all the other islands as well. Most of them that are here, they've dedicated their lives to the arts and crafts where, you know, they're, they're, they're making things with their hands. And it's organised by a group called the Colectivo Mafasca who put a lot of work, they're all volunteers, and they put a lot of work in to help organising along with the Council uh, of Antigua uh, uh, to actually organise the, the fair every year. Uh, so when they all get together, you know, uh, it, it's great because you're getting to see all different types of arts and crafts. Not just arts and crafts, the food side of it, the gastronomy as well, all the different local foods uh, and things that you can experience here in the Canary Islands. It's absolutely brilliant, just looking around. It's, it's very noisy here today because it's the, school, it's the school day, it's the school outing. But it's brilliant because um, the, the kids are, you can tell that the kids are really excited. Um, I mean, what do the kids get out of it in particular? The kids, they get a chance to see all these different things. They get a chance to, to see demonstrations like what they're doing over here at the moment. Uh, lots of, the, you know, the, it, it's a re interaction with uh, the actual craft makers. Uh, they get to try things, they get to taste things. Uh, you know, and then they all go away, they all come with a little pocket money and they all go away home, they take, you know, wooden toys, all these little things that you don't buy in the shops normally. And it's good because it's things that they're, they're using their hand, they're not sat with a phone to yeah. do it. They're actually interacting and doing stuff with their hands. That's great, because uh, I've spotted that there are a few instruments here for making bird calls with. They seem to be very popular, which is brilliant. An anything that annoys parents. Exactly. I was just about to say that. Whatever annoys their mum and dad at home, that's the things they tend to come home with. Yeah. <laughs> that's My son brought back one a couple of years ago, one of the, the bird yeah. callers. It's obviously attracting tourists, but it's not just for the tourists. It's very much for the residents of the Canary Islands too. No, it's for everybody. It's for everyone that lives here, no matter what nationality you are, whether you're Spanish, uh, you know, from wherever you are in the world, it just brings people together and it's a chance to have a really fantastic day out, to see lots of different things, all the, the concerts that they put on, it's not just adults, there's children up there performing as well, dancing, uh, singing, you know, from different associations, from different schools, uh, playing instruments. It's very much a, a kind of a genuine Spanish event, this is, yes, this is proper Spanish culture here. Yeah, it, it, as I say, when, when you're walking around the craft fair, there's so many different types of arts and crafts, whether it be things that are made uh, this year is the, with the fabrics, the lady that's won the, the prize this year, Maria del Carmen, uh, for her work with fabrics, uh, they work with wood, they work with metals, they work with all different types of things, with silk, uh, you know, so it's interesting and you, you know, you see things and you think, wow. Now, uh, we posted a video uh, a few days ago uh, about the free buses from the various resorts uh, across the whole of Fuerteventura. Can you just uh, remind us a little bit about the details of that and, and if people can still actually get them? If you don't pick a ticket up and turn up, then you'll be last last served, you yeah. know. Go to the, the pickup points for the buses and if there's free buses, the guides know that they're allowed to let you on whether you have a ticket or not, as long as there's places uh, to try and ensure that we can get as many people here as possible. Basically, people aren't going to be left hanging around no. in the in the resorts. Uh, they, they will know if they can get They'll here. Go straight away. Basically, when they turn up, there's a guide there. The guide will get the people that have got all the tickets on the bus. He'll look at his list and say, we only had 30 people booked on this bus. It's a 55-seater. So everybody else that's got tickets, and then those ones after, if they don't have tickets, they'll still get on as well. If not, that guide will have the information to say this afternoon, that bus has X amount booked on it. Please come back this afternoon and he'll make a little mark on their ticket 
that they've already tried in the morning. It'll be the same guide that comes back in the afternoon anyway, and they'll be able to get on the next bus. And if not on the Saturday afternoon, they can come sat Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon as well. That's for Coleta and for Costa Antigua. The buses from Coralejo and Costa Calma, there's only buses in the morning. So it really is important that they pick up their tickets. Even if you haven't got a ticket at this late stage, yeah. there's, uh, still a there's still a chance that you can get up here. And of course, if you can't get up here on the free transport, then there's plenty of parking. There's the park and ride, isn't there? Yeah, you can. Uh, if you've got a hire car, you can bring your car as far up and drop it at the sports um, the sports centre just on as you arrive into Antigua. Leave the car there, and then they have this little micro bus that they just bus people back and forward to the ferry all day long to save you having to try and look for parking up here because this gets really busy on Saturday and Sunday. Or you can get a taxi. If there's four of you in a taxi, it doesn't work out too bad. Yes. Uh, from Coleta, you could pick up a taxi uh, or from Costa Antigua. You yeah. wouldn't pay that much if you're sharing the, uh, the, the trip between... No, it's a good point, isn't it? So, yeah, so what would you say? What was about 20 uh, euros? About 25 euros to get as far as this point. About approximately 25 euros. So if you do between that four between people. two couples uh, yeah. or four individuals, it, yeah. it doesn't work out too bad. And it's definitely worth it. It's definitely yeah. worth it because... Yeah, it's it, uh, um, you know, there's uh, there's all kinds of brilliant things that you can take home with you. What what kind of things? Uh, are, you know, so you come here to visit the craft fair. What are you likely to take home with you? I always go for my goat's cheese, all the different types of goat's cheeses. I like the mojo sauces, all the different types of sauces in that, and then all the different nuts that you get. Uh, your uh, coated in uh, honeys and yeah, things that you shouldn't be. <laughs> Not good for the figure. And there's some other unusual things as well. Uh, down in the, they've got all pastries and breads. So I always buy fresh bread when I'm here. Uh, yeah, there's just loads of different things to choose from. So we ought to mention that is there, is there wine? Yes, there's wine as well. That always goes. That always goes in the shopping bag. So, right. yeah. oh, okay. so different wines from different islands. And, th and there's actually a cafeteria. Is that the one yeah, that's so reasonably yeah, priced? The start at a main course and a pudding, and it's like eight or nine euros for yeah. the whole lot and a little drink. So it's actually quite, it, it's yeah. actually a fairly cost-effective day out really isn't it so um, yeah if, if you're here definitely come and check it out so um, I'm almost frightened to ask this given your current physical state but are you okay to give us a little bit of a tour yes of course oh thank Let's you so much Debbie